Intel is getting deadly serious about its GPU ambitions, and the company has announced at ISC 2021 that the XE HPG platform, previously known as DG2, is now sampling to its partners. This is a huge milestone since it means that not only has the design and prototyping been finalized, but the company is getting into the final leg of the journey, which is sampling and production. This also means that gamers will likely see the first Intel discrete graphics card in about six months time, likely at CES 2022. Now, last week, Intel restructured the company to put graphics front and center and creating a new business unit, the Accelerated Computer Systems and Graphics Group, or ACSG. Led by Intel GPU Chief Architect Raja Kaduri, this sort of Radeon of Intel, although admittedly is much less sexy as far as the names go, and go on to show just how serious the company is in breaking the duopoly of Nvidia and AMD and turning into a triopoly. Now, Intel's XEHPG is planned to offer up 512 execution units with 8 ALUs each, making up a total of 4,096 ALUs, or cores rather, is something you're more used to hearing. However, we have already seen through rough performance of up to 448 EUs in the wild, and it doesn't disappoint. Now, keeping in mind that this is Intel's absolute first attempt at this, and that old thing that they did years and years ago, the i740, let's, uh, let's let that just be in the past. Now, the bar was not high to begin with, with Intel, since that's kind of where they come from. And we would have been satisfied with commercial mid-end GPUs, but it looks like Raja is planning to come out of the gate swinging because the XE HPG actually matches NVIDIA's RTX 3070 at the 448 EU level and should beat it with the 512 EU model. Now keep in mind, however, that when Intel says DG2 is sampling, they are likely talking about the mobility variant of the GPU and not the desktop variant, although both will be technically discrete. This means that the initial numbers that we are seeing are going to be from the power efficiency focus and will have the TDPs limited to a max draw of about 100 watts. In a desktop version, this could easily go upwards to 150 watts without breaking a sweat, and the 1.8 to 1.9 gigahertz clock we're seeing on the mobility chips should easily cross the 2 to 2.1 gigahertz mark. This level of performance is more than enough for the mass majority of gamers that are not planning to exceed the 4K60 standard, and thanks to the hardware support for ray tracing, it will also have an actual DLSS competitor in the form of XESS, which is a machine-learned motion vector supported form of upscaling. Now, if Intel is able to do XESS just right, the value offered by the XEHPG will be absolutely phenomenal, assuming, of course, that it is bad at mining performance. If it turns out to have an amazing mining performance, well, we admit there's nothing to suggest that they don't, then it will likely see prices go up through the roof for this GPU as well. And considering the XEHPG would be fabricated on TSMC process, there will be no supply advantage to be had as well. One thing is for sure, the GPU landscape is getting very competitive. Whether or not you can buy these things is a whole different story. And I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you like what you've seen here and you like getting news daily, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. And if you've missed out on news in the past and you want to catch those, check out one of these videos over here.